What's up and welcome guys, I'm Luke Martin with ChopstickTravel.com and today we are taking you for a real Japanese street food experience. We are at Sunamachi Ginza Dori, which is just a street packed with lots of good food. So I'm hungry, let's go. Okay, we are at our first stop today and we have come to a 50 year old restaurant and they're serving some beautiful looking homemade tempura. So we've got our first piece here. They just freshly deep fried it and this is sort of a mixture of a few things. We've got some onions and some shrimp and then a couple different herbs and also it is topped with a secret house sauce. So I'm going to try this out. And this is kind of a big piece, but I'll just take a good bite. Mm. Whoa. Mm. That is so crispy on the outside. Like really like golden crispy. But those onions inside are, are really juicy at the same time. I'm actually going to try to take a bite of this shrimp right here. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, those onions are so good. And that's like a quite a meaty shrimp, actually. And the house sauce is like a little bit sweet. Oh man, that's really good. It's just quality, you can taste. All right, just finished off with our first snack of the day, and that was some delicious homemade tempura. They make 24 different kinds, but we just tried their most popular, and we only had one piece because we want to keep our stomachs not full so we can continue to eat today. But that was really good. Oh, uh, Microsoft. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we are inside of a shop that is selling all kinds of different miso pastes and they are just all kinds of different colors and different periods of fermentation make different types of miso. So I've got one here, this is the uh, most popular from the shop and I'm going to try it out. It smells really good. Mm. Yeah, well it's quite salty. That's delicious though. You know, just a miso flavor. Mm. Okay, we have uh, another kind here. This is much different color. It's more yellow, and this is supposedly more mild. Mm. Oh yeah, it's much more mild. And a little bit sweet, kind of a little bit cheesy almost. Mm. Miso is a very important part of Japanese cuisine, and often you will get a miso soup with mostly every meal and it's got a 1300 year old history. Each part of Japan actually has their own different kind of style of miso and this shop here has all kinds of different ones and they're really delicious. So right now we are at a shop selling sake, Japanese rice wine, and there are so many different kinds. So I didn't really think we were going to be drinking sake for breakfast, but I guess we are. We're just going to be doing a little sampling, and I could really get into what sake is all about, but that would be a whole video in itself. Basically each bottle or each kind has its own special rice and its own special water. So we've got one here that is very popular, and I'm going to taste it. Hmm. Actually, that, that's a little bit sweet, not very dry, and it's just a pure rice wine. Not very strong either, actually, it's nice. Ok, 
Okay, at our next stop, and we have ordered up something called a minced beef cutlet. And this is a deep fried minced beef, and it just looks so crispy. And this was introduced into Japan about 150 years ago by Western cultures. So I'm going to take a big bite of this, and I can just tell it's gonna be extremely crunchy. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. It's actually kind of like crumbly. So there's these bread crumbs on the outside that are ridiculously crispy. And there's also actually a sauce. I'm gonna pour a little bit of that on. It's just right there. Try that again. Oh, that's delicious. Mmm. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. That's really good. Inside, there's just a ton of beef minced beef with lots of black pepper as well. Super juicy on the inside, and then golden crispy on the outside. Mm. The second piece we ordered was a deep fried quail egg, and there is five of them on here, and just breaded in that same breadcrumb mixture. And this sauce is really good. It's a little bit sweet. I'm gonna put some of that on this egg, and probably just take that whole top egg. Mmm. Oh wow, oh, oh yeah, that is so good. In Japan, you'll never eat an overcooked egg, and inside that is just a very, very creamy yolk. Again, just completely golden crispy on the outside. Oh man, that's delicious. Okay, this minced beef cutlet is delicious. There's actually some finely chopped onions in there as well. And it's quite different than the tempura. The tempura is more of like a delicate, very crunchy batter. And this is more like bread crumbs and crumbly. But I am loving this anyway. <laughs> So we are at our next spot and we are trying something that I love and that is Oden, Japanese hot pot. So it is all the ingredients are here and they are simmering away in a stock of dashi which is dried bonito flakes and dried kelp and then some soy sauce, some sake, lots of different ingredients. It's actually a secret recipe, so we don't know exactly, but it smells amazing. So we've ordered up a couple different things, and the first that I have here is this, and that is the daikon radish, a massive piece of daikon radish. And it is not very easy to find good oden in Tokyo, or oden at all. So I'm going to try this out, and it just smells incredible. <laughs> Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that is so soft. It's almost like a like a baked potato that is ridiculously soft and it is soaked up all that broth phenomenally. It's a little bit you can taste like some soy soy sauce saltiness and a little bit kind of of that dried bonito fishiness too. Oh man, that is awesome. Okay, the next one we have here is this. This is a spicy fish cake and there's tons of different ingredients in there I'm not exactly sure some greens lots of different things some onions and let's take a bite of that as well mm. Mm -hmm. that's good as well really solid and that just soaks up all that that juice oh man that's so juicy and that's actually a little bit spicy lots of onions in there as well so two more things we have over here this is a bean curd and it looks like there might be some sesame seeds in there some roasted sesame seeds and I'm not sure if this will be spicy too but we'll try mm. oh wow that was just full of juice that is so juicy it's kind of like a deep-fried tofu it's a bean curd 
and that also, the, all these ingredients just do a really good job at soaking up all that juice, that delicious Oden uh, soup broth. And here is a really uh, interesting ingredient that I've actually never tried before. This is mochi wrapped in bean curd. So I've had both bean curd and mochi, but never um, in this way. So this should be interesting. Let's try it out. Mm. Whoa. Wow. That's just a big chunk of mochi in there. Super kind of creamy, chewy mochi. And then wrapped in this kind of the same texture bean curd as this. And again, that bean curd is just holding in all that juice. And that mochi is kind of like creamy on the inside. Oh man, this is really good. So this is just the perfect Japanese comfort food. It's very popular to actually eat oden in winter. And I can see why it's just like warming your body. And I finished off my sticks and now I just have a little bit of the broth at the end and definitely not going to let anything go to waste. Oh yeah, oh man, that's so good. Okay, so our next thing we are going to be eating today is yakitori, which is skewered meat, usually chicken. And we've got quite a few different things here. So first up is the skin of the chicken and just grilled to kind of a crisp. Then we have thigh with uh, leek and then uh, thigh just with no leek and then the heart. So I think I'm gonna go for this piece here, the chicken thigh. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, that was a really big bite, but oh, that is so delicious. It's extremely smoky, kind of like burnt around the edges, you can see. And it's covered in another secret sauce, but it is a little bit sweet and kind of actually a little bit sour as well. So I'm gonna try the chicken skin next. And it is just completely kind of shriveled up from that hot, hot heat. Mm. Oh yeah, that's really good. It's definitely kind of like gelatinous, a little bit fatty, and it's again, just really smoky, sort of burnt flavor. All right, so this is really good so far, and while the first three are chicken, the last one here is pork, and this is pork heart, and you can tell it's a little bit dark in color, but it looks really good. Let's try this little end piece. Mmm. 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 Oh, that's really good. It's got like a nice firm, kind of spongy texture. I guess you can taste like a little bit kind of faint like iron taste. And that did a really good job soaking up that sauce. And that sauce is just really delicious. It's nice like sweet, maybe a little bit of vinegar in there as well. Mm. Yakitori is one of my favorites. Steamed uh, green pea, Steamed sencha. Green tea. Mm. Okay. Oh, this is delicious. It's like six grams, six grams. Like one cup of this. This is for one cup. One cup. It wait for about one minute. About one minute to cool down. Cool down. Cool down. We are learning to make Japanese traditional green tea and so I've got my package of green tea and I'll walk you through the steps on how to make it. So open this up first. Take this out. Thank you. Oh. And pour the tea into the teapot. There we go. Okay. 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 
Okay, so now we need to get some boiling water or and then slightly cool it. So for one minute? One minute? One minute, okay. Uh, it, it, it. So, uh, I mean, so we use this uh, green tea um, sand timer. And we wait for the water to cool down slightly, otherwise the tea might be too bitter. Okay, okay the hourglass is up and we're gonna pour this water in. Seconds. 30 seconds, okay. So now we steep for 30 seconds. So about half. Half the timer. The 30 seconds has passed. Pour our tea. And that has a really nice green color. And we have to pour till the very last drop. <laughs> Almost has a little bit of a yellow tinge to it. Couple more drops. So I will try this one first. It's kind of got like a yellowish green tinge to it. Mmm. Ooh. It's a little bit slightly bitter. And I'm actually going to compare it to tea that Sabrina just made before me. Mm. Oh, Sabrina's is actually a little bit more mild than mine. And almost more of like a grassy flavor. I'll try mine again. Mmm. Yeah, that's really soothing. So we have another type of tea here. This is actually made with the tea stems and it's a roasted tea and then cooled, so on ice. And it's popular summer drink, he said. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's much stronger. And you can definitely taste that it's roasted. Mm. Mm, yeah, it has like really kind of like an earthy flavor. That's good. We have a little snack to accompany our tea and this is called Inari Sushi and it is a sushi rice, so vinegared rice wrapped in a fried bean curd. And let's try this out, it looks really good. Mm. Mm. So that rice on the inside is sour from the vinegar. But the bean curd on the outside is actually a little bit sweet and it's kind of like oily but really good. Mm. That has a really nice texture, kind of like firm on the outside and then the rice in the middle. So with our Japanese tea, we are having a traditional sweet that often accompanies tea. And that is a special kind of thing made with red beans and agar jelly, some sugar and water. And it's supposed to be pretty sweet, so I'm gonna try a small bite. Mm. Mm. Sweet, very sweet from those red beans. Ooh, quite sweet. And has a really interesting, like, jelly, but more firm than like a jello. Mm. I like that. But it is very sweet. Mm. All right, guys, that is it for today's tour. That was so good. We ate so much delicious food. Definitely that tempura and also that oden are up there competing for number one spot. And today's video was in partnership with Japan Wonder Travel. So they are taking us today on their food drink tour of Sunamachi Ginza Dori, the street that we just ate all kinds of delicious food. And let me tell you, we would not have been able to find this place if it wasn't for them. So I'm going to put all of their links in the description box so you can come here and eat some delicious food if you want. But they also have tons of other options for tours here in Japan, including Tsukiji Fish Market and all other kinds of things. Definitely check them out and consider coming to Japan with them. So I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and let me know if you have any questions in the comment box and subscribe for more videos like this. And I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.